you know, I find there, there's so much to explain in terms of uh, the inflow matrix of an operating system. And like anything, it takes time. It takes learning things in bits and pieces and parts. And one day you've got this set of maps in your mind that you can use to do business, to understand a whole business system, to understand how sort of uh, businesses interact with one another in this larger culture that we live in. And to do so, you have to put together a number of different conceptual models. You've got to get maps. And these maps start to fit with each other in a conceptual way, not a physical way. And so there's a pattern mind or a conceptual mind that deals with abstract symbols and patterns. And from what I see, it's, it's a skill that needs to be practiced and it takes time to develop. And for people that have no connection into the pattern mind, whatever the inflow matrix is can seem to be daunting and overwhelming. But like anything, it's, it's just something that takes time to learn. And once you've memorized the parts, they start to work together on their own. There isn't something conscious that you have to do. You just start to see the connections and you start to understand a new methodology of bringing words together and placing them on forms like this, where you have a, a top and a bottom. And you may have the bottom can be the individual. And as you rise up, you go into the group and the larger group, and then you come back around into, into the individual again. And so what you're doing is you're placing words on a map. You're placing words on a structure. And these words, are positioned in places that have meaning to each other. And this is new. This is looking at all of the diagrams that you see in books and all of the uh, models that you've ever seen coming together and beginning to make sense. Like how do the seven habits of Stephen Covey's uh, effective habits connect in with Maslow's hierarchy of needs? You know, how do the chakra system uh, connect into a map of society? So you've got things that are very individual at the personal level inside the individual, and then you've got maps and organizations and systems that are in larger and larger collectives outside of the individual. And so we need a thinking system that's scalable and able to go through multiple levels and able to hold multiple perspectives. And so to do so, it takes learning the maps. And this is just a little explanation on my part around why language on top of sacred geometry is so important if we want to get in alignment with how things actually are in the world. And the mind can operate with models that actually don't connect into reality. But because there's mutual agreement from everybody on them, we tend to use them as our truth. And this is something that is good in some ways and, and in other ways isn't so good. If you want to be in true alignment with the, the laws of nature or the laws of God or the laws of what is. Because fundamentally you can think things, you can believe things doesn't necessarily mean that they're correct in terms of their analysis of what reality is. So one of the big assumptions has been when you take concepts and you place them on maps like this, that your inner world becomes more balanced and your outer world becomes more harmonious. And that as more people use the maps, to create the same reference point, then it's easier to understand one another. And there are modalities and methodologies of communicating that start to show up because you're sharing the same conceptual map. And it's, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. I mean, it, if you have a map of Calgary and I have a map of Edmonton and we're trying to talk with one another about how to go to where we're gonna go, it's not gonna work, is it? But if we have a map of Alberta 
And uh, we both have maps of Edmonton and Calgary, and we recognize the other person's in Edmonton and the other person's in Calgary, then it'll work. But we don't do that with conceptual maps. It's not as easy to understand the conceptual layout of the other person's mind. And so our interpretation of what the words mean and how they fit together can be very different. And so the idea of having a thinking system, a business thinking system, is that you have a universal model that you can apply to any business. And that once you have that in your mind, your understanding of business, your understanding of how these business systems works, jumps into a new level of assistance thinking. And so that is probably one of the most important things in terms of learning the inflow matrix. Operating system is that you really are, are new, you're using a new skill. It's gonna take time, but in the long run, you are going to be in alignment with the higher laws of the universe because you're utilizing universal shapes and you're connecting into a totally different way of multidimensional thinking that opens up access to a whole new world of possibility for us as an individual, for us as teams, for us as an organization, and for us as larger communities, and in fact, the whole species. So I hope this helped you out to understand things a little bit more. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next video.